This is One on One. And with us now is Newark mayoral candidate, Shavar Jeffries. Mr. Jeffries, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, Mr. Jeffries, what makes you the most qualified person to become the next mayor of Newark? Uh, it's the deep experiences I have uh, serving the people of Newark and producing results. I'm a former assistant attorney general for the state of New Jersey. Uh, our team uh, created a safety plan that reduced violent crime from 2007 to 2009 throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, we doubled the graduation rate for kids convicted of crime, and much of the crime in the city of Newark is committed by kids. Uh, we also uh, reduced the rearrest rate for sex offenders by almost 30 percent. So it's a regular performance. Uh, and right now in the city of Newark, crime is simply out of control, uh, particularly in the South Ward, where my opponent hails from, where murders going up 70 percent. Uh, so we're going to stabilize and grow our city. We have to first stabilize and bring safety and security to our streets. Your uh, opponent, Raz Baraka, who is with us in the first segment. By the way, I want to make it clear that the election is being held on uh, Tuesday, May 13th, and, and you did not see the interview that we did with your opponent. He made it clear that um, you really do not understand crime and um, sure. that he has been in the streets, he understands crime, and he can deal with it in a much more effective fashion than you can, and that your experience in the Attorney General's office is not what is needed. Well, obviously, he doesn't understand crime. He's been the councilman of the South Ward for the last four years, where murders have gone up 70 percent uh, under his watch. Uh, uh, every index crime is up in the South Ward under his watch. Uh, his approach to dealing with crime is to apologize for gang leaders. He's written letters seeking leniency for gang leaders who've killed Norkers. You're talking and about El Tariq. Gums. Yes, a gentleman named Killerik, uh, Councilman Baraka, felt it important to write a letter seeking leniency for him. And that sort of culture is why we murders have gone up 70 percent. Re respectfully, Mr. Jeffries, he said on this program that he was not seeking leniency, that the gentleman is in fact doing the time because he did the crime, but rather it is important to have relationships and build rapport with gang leaders if in fact you want to be a leader in the city and deal with crime. Well, he, in fact, did, regardless of what he said. He did write a letter uh, to the federal court seeking leniency. I believe in reentry. At the state level, I actually oversaw reentry pr uh, programs, but that's very different. Leniency is saying that people shouldn't get the kind of punishment they deserve uh, based, based on the reasons underlying leniency. Reentry says after you pay the price for the crimes you did, we want you to reenter into society effectively. And that's part of the reason this culture of apologizing for gang activity is why gangs have taken over the South Ward, why murders are up 70 percent in the South Ward, under Councilman Baraka's watch. I'm not going to tolerate the, the levels of gang activity we have in our communities. I have a record of reducing that. I was the third most senior official in the Attorney General's office under Governor Corzine. In fact, our team did oversee safety plans that reduced violent crime throughout the state of New Jersey three years in a row. Uh, and so that's a record that speaks for itself. So and so does his. Is, uh, Mr. Jeffries, is it safe to say that reducing crime rate and murder rate specifically is the number one issue that for you is the, is the number one focus that you want to tackle? Cool. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I go throughout. I was just with uh, a mother yesterday who talked about when she takes her child to the school uh, in the morning, uh, she keeps a knife in her coat uh, because uh, this past summer she saw one of her friends in her neighborhood shot and killed in front of her and her children. And these are the kinds of stories I hear throughout the city of Newark. Uh, people don't feel safe in our neighborhoods. We have young people being killed. Just this past Thursday, I was at the wake for a young man shot 15 times uh, in the West Ward and killed last week. Uh, crime is out of control. It not only means unsafe neighborhoods for our families, and our residents. It also hurts jobs and investments. Investments don't come to places uh, with 111 murders, which is what we had in 2013. So as the only uh, candidate with law enforcement uh, experience and an actual record of reducing violent crime, I'm going to bring that with me to City Hall and produce but, better but Mr. results. Jeffries, Mr. Brock would make the argument that your experience is not in the city of Newark itself in terms of government experience, in terms of experience on the streets making a difference. I mean, he is a principal at Central High School. High School. He has been a councilman for, for several years. He's a former deputy mayor, and he argues simply said it right on this show. You don't have the experience. Well, I have dramatically more experience than he does, and I also have more experience in terms of producing results. I've also been a civil rights lawyer representing Norkers for 15 years on issues that matter to their quality of life, representing res residents uh, denied affordable housing, re representing re residents who are victims of domestic violence, uh, representing parents seeking better educational services for their children, representing Norkers who are facing foreclosure. I've been the president of the school board. I've been the counsel of the, to, to the attorney general. I run nonprofits in the city of Newark. I founded the Team Academy Public Charter Schools. Most 
most importantly, have a record of accomplishment, reducing violent crime, reducing the rearrest rate, creating a mortgage mediation program that took half of the families in the state of New Jersey, including many in Newark, out of foreclosure. In contrast, again, my opponent uh, has presided over South Ward, where murder's up 70 percent. He's been on the council at a time taxes have been raised 40 percent, at a time that cops have been laid off, which have made our streets more dangerous, and at a time that he's done nothing on his end uh, to bring any savings. He has multiple public jobs. He has his family members on the payroll. He has a taxpayer-funded car. He makes a quarter million dollars at a time that taxes are raised, and our residents can't afford the basic well, services they need. But also, the other question that's interesting is, in spite of everything you say, he has gained the support of a fair number of the public employee unions. Fair assessment. Uh, he has uh, gained the support of, of the union and some other interests who were connected to the status quo. Uh, you know, we're about a, a, a fresh change. And if the people of Newark want the same sort of patronage-based politics uh, that we've seen in the past, uh, then my opponent represents that very well. Uh, we're going to be about making performance-based decisions in terms of how we move the city forward. We're not going to promise everything to everyone just so that we can get political support. Uh, we're going to move this city forward. And the, the kind of decisions that my opponent makes is part of the reason that tax have gone up 40%, uh, why Moody's is threatening to downgrade the city's credit rating, and why the state is now threatening to take over the budget for the city. Want to talk All right, yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk about it. Yeah, the, all of those things to try to touch on, but let's talk about education. You've been involved in education, education reform. Your opponent has a 12-point uh, blueprint for education. What are the key issues that you will bring to education to reform education in Newark? Well, uh, I'm a strong believer in local control, that the parents of Newark ought to be able to elect the people who make decisions that affect the educational welfare of their children. Uh, we got to fight to make sure we have the resources in our schools, but then we got to fight to make sure we use these resources wisely. We have to make sure we have strong school leaders in our, uh, uh, running our schools and effective teachers in every classroom. Uh, okay, well, are you in favor of charter schools, increasing the number of charter schools and, and allowing them to co-locate uh, with public school? I'm in favor of, I'm in, I'm in strong favor of parents making the decision about what school will serve their child. So if a Newark parent, if a Newark mother or father believes that a public charter school is in the best interest uh, to serve the educational needs of their child, I support the you parents. Would encourage, you would encourage more charter schools. I support the parents' right to make that decision. So How about the, voucher, a pilot voucher program in Newark? Would you support that? I support choice through the public charter framework. I think that creates uh, greater public accountability. I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, it also ensures that we can make sure that, that charter schools do the right so thing the for answer kids is no. as well. You would not support the idea of a voucher program, a pilot voucher program, Mr. Jeffries, that would allow parents in the city of Newark to have their child go to a non-public school and get a voucher from the government? I would never, I would never say never, no, because let me, I'm here today, my mother was killed, uh, my father abandoned me when I was young, and I'm in front of you today because I got a scholarship from the you Boys and Girls Club. You were 10 years of age when you lost your mother. I was mom. 10 years old when my mother was killed and my father abandoned me shortly thereafter. And I'm only here today because I got a scholarship from the Boys and Girls Club to go to Seton Hall Prep and it changed my life. So I would never, if the decision came to me, I would never oppose any pilot but program. But why don't you support it wholeheartedly then? Because I think the better way, because when we're talking about public policy, we'll think what's the optimal way to produce the results we want. I think the best way to expand choice for families is through the public framework because there's greater public accountability. And if schools are failing the kids in Newark, are you in favor of closing down those schools? I'm in favor of any uh, remedy that'll make sure that kids receive an effective education. I believe there's a whole host of initiatives we need to pursue before we even think about closing schools. But if you have, and the school is failing and continues to fail, you would say close that school down? If, we, if there is no other option, but I think oftentimes there's many other options, in, improving the curriculum, making sure we have better teachers in the classroom, making sure those mm -hmm. educators have the resources that they need, making sure we have strong school leaders who can make sure that the teachers have an environment where they can be effective. I think usually there are many, many, many other uh, remedies we can use other than closing a school. That has to be the absolute last resort. Question. Um, you've, you've even referenced this, but I'm going to be more direct. Why not Ros Baraka? Well, you know, I respect Councilman Baraka. He's fought for 20 years for communities that oftentimes other people didn't uh, uh, fight for. But he has no record of performance. In fact, it's a failed record. As a councilman for the South Ward, murders have gone up 70 percent. There is no development in the South Ward. Foreclosures are up. Unemployment is up. He's been the principal of a public high school for almost 10 years, and those children are beautiful and amazing and have limitless potential. Uh, but it, when he started, it was one of the worst performing high schools in the state of New Jersey. Today, it's in the bottom 5 percent of high schools in the state of New Jersey he as a part that they're from a different set of numbers, but it's because he would argue that Central High School is, in fact, uh, doing very well by those students. And, and so I, I'm not sure, I'm not going to play the numbers game, but he would argue that's one of the reasons why he should be mayor, because the success 
of Central High. As of October 2013, the state of New Jersey, and anybody can look it up on the DOE website, uh, found that this Central High School was what's called a priority school, which means it's in the bottom 5% of high schools in the state of New Jersey. Uh, that's not the kind of record I think he should be proud of. And I also don't think he should be proud of a record where murder's going up 70%. If murder is flat, that is a disaster. Murders have gone up 70%. You, 45 you keep murders repeating that, and you just give a whole litany of the things why you don't, of, of his failures, but you said at the outset that you respected him. What do you respect him if he's got such a litany of failures? Well, I mean, I, you know, just uh, I respect the fact that he's been a vocal uh, advocate uh, for uh, uh, disinherited and dispossessed communities for a long period of time, but now we have to hire a mayor. Hmm. So I, I respect a lot of people. That doesn't think I, I believe they're the most qualified or even qualified at all to be the mayor for the city of Newark, the largest city in the state of New Jersey. One question on education, at least sure. from, for me, the last question on education. Would you support, uh, if there have to be layoffs of teacher, would you support changing the system so that uh, the people who remain in the schools are the most qualified or the best teachers rather than the ones who have served in there the course. longest? If there has to be layoffs, to me it's just common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, that quality ought to be uh, a consideration. A consideration, and but more than a consideration, should it, be, should it trump seniority? I believe it should, but again, the way you do that is through the law. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can't have one superintendent unilaterally do that. Uh, we have to change the law in order to do that. And I do think the law should say quality uh, should be the driving determinant in terms of how we decide who's in front of our children. Final question from our perspective. By the way, election again is on May 13th, uh, Tuesday. Important election, not just for uh, Newark, but for New Jersey and possibly the nation. State of New Jersey, looking at the finances of the city of Newark for a long time, take it over, the job becomes a different job as mayor. What does that mean if you become mayor? Under my leadership, I'm confident I can hold this, the state off. And this is a critical issue. You've got to have leadership that is experienced. I've managed budgets of $170 million at the state level and 1,300 employees. Uh, we reduce overtime. We reduce outsourced contracts. We cut waste, fraud, and abuse. Uh, in contrast, again, my opponent is part of the problem. Uh, multiple public jobs, family members on the payroll, taxpayer-funded car, making a quarter million dollars in multiple public jobs. That's, those sort of values are exactly how the city of Newark has gotten itself to a position where it could be taken over by the state of New Jersey. We're going to need professional, responsible, executive leadership, and that's the experience I'm going to bring with me to City Hall. Uh, it's a fascinating election. Um, we may call it <clears throat> Newark at a crossroads, yes. life after Cory Booker uh, has been mayor for the last uh, many, many years. Uh, once again, Shivar Jeffries, I want to thank you for joining thank us. You. And also your thank opponent, you. Roz Barak, I want to thank him as well for joining us. It is an important election for Newark, for New Jersey, for the nation. We'll make sure we see you next time and make sure you get out there and vote on Tuesday, May 13th. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. And 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Virtua the New Jersey Education Association, Johnson & Johnson, the Ollendorf Center, the Adler Aphasia Center, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by this public-spirited organization. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger, powering NJ.com. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.